everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by American Digger Magazine and the Smoky Mountain Relic Room. And, yeah, look, 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 that means something awesome's going on. We're here with our buddy Tyree Lamp. Ty, Howdy. dude, thanks for having us out. Dude, we have got a massive hole going on. What are we digging? We're digging the Green River Formation again. Okay. We've done one episode on this, but this is 80 miles, 100 miles. Yeah. Different. Different shoreline, different deposition, different critters, different stuff here. So what period of time are we hanging out yeah. in? This the you've seen this about 40 million years. About 40 million years. Yeah. So is this like a massive lake? This was a massive lake. This was called Lake Uinta. This lake was 150 miles long and 80 miles wide. And see, that's one of three lakes within the Green River Formation, or four, three or four lakes. Three, yeah. You've got Fossil Lake, you've got Lake Goshoot, and Lake, lake Uinta. Uinta. Yeah. And those lakes are home to some of the best preserved fossils in all of the United States. I mean, the yeah. preservation is incredible. You know, one of the reasons why we wanted to come back here and do this episode again is just to show you guys the abundance of fossils that are out here, but also, you know, how how quickly these fossils become destroyed by the natural elements. Yeah, they, they don't last long. Um, one of the things, this is a brand new ranch we just picked up, this private property. Uh, one of the reasons we got this private property is we were hoping to get some vertebrate material. Yeah. Because on public land, you can only pick up invertebrate. We can dig the leaves and things like that. But if you find something like this. Something like that. On public land, you have to just pitch it over your shoulder. You can't do anything with it. And it's a little fish. That would last about... 24 hours on the surface out here before that's destroyed. Yeah. The last episode that we that we were with you guys, we were on public land. Now, on public land, you can collect all the invertebrate, all the plant material that you want. You're not allowed to sell it, but you can collect it. On this ranch, because it is private property, we're able to collect vertebrate stuff. So the hope was that we'd find some vertebrate stuff. We hadn't found, you know, just a couple of fish. Isaac found a fish. Lots of plant material. But... This stuff doesn't last very long, and once it's and it's not like there's a limited amount of it. <laughs> there, there is literally what hundreds of square miles. Hun so hundred <laughs> miles that way, hundred miles that way. Yeah. All this property, all uh, just it's insane how much of it it is out there, yeah. and you get a lot of cool stuff. You know, if there was ever something that you know. That would be a good candidate for pay digs or fossil digs or whatever this for the public. Yep. This would be it. It would. So, real quick on um, public land, can anybody just walk out and start digging a hole? On BLM public lands, uh, there are a few regulations like petrified wood, two pieces, 200 pounds per year, things like that. The invertebrate fossils, seashells, leaves, things like that, you can collect a reasonable amount. Yeah. Um, you can only disturb a small area. You can't go. You can't use power equipment. You can't come out here with a backhoe on no. public land and yeah. just start digging a hole. Yeah. But it's that's one of the great things about our public land is it's open for people to go do that. And see, this is something that a lot of people back east you you they have no fathom of public lands, no idea of public lands, no idea that you have the right to go out and to collect invertebrate fossils on public land. You can go dig a hole. So if you want to go fossil hunt right now, get online, get on Google, look up Lake Uinta, look at public lands, look at places to go fossil hunt. So yeah, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, There is a lot. And a lot of wind. You'll yeah, get a, a lot, lot of, of wind. Yeah, a lot of wind and a lot of dust. Every episode. Well, yeah. <laughs> so let's let's look at some of the cooler stuff that we found here. So what we've do you just, got? We've just started digging. There's a few leaves. We've not been finding the big leaves like we were over at the last place, but we're finding a lot of nice, a lot specimens, of nice, specimens. a lot of little insects, a lot of nice leaves, things like that. I mean, it's we're just learning this ranch. Yeah, I here's mean, a nice little nice little leaf set we've got right here. What's cool about this stuff is you get the positive and a negative. Now, why is that that you get both the positive and the negative? Well, these are not really replaced. What it is is the carbon stain from the leaf that was in it. So between the mud layers and then when it peels apart, it's just the mud, it's just the carbon imprint in mud. It's all you're seeing. So you get both. 
the upper and the lower. So instead of like with dinosaur fossils, for example, with vertebrate stuff where you're you're actually getting mineral replacement yeah. of the bone, in this stuff you're just getting the stain, you're the just imprint. Getting, yeah, you're just it's just the carbon that's left from the plant. Okay. This is this is oil shale. And this is how the oil was made. Is all that carbon, all the little plants and litter and algae and stuff like that the carbon is still there when you get enough of it and it flows you get oil right i got you so when you're finding these fossils you are you're finding the imprint of it instead of the mineral replacement which is why you can get two fossils on one plate and that's one of the reasons that these don't last because it's carbon you leave it out in the sun within 24 hours yeah, it's, it's gone. gone. It's gone. It's white. It's oxidized. It's toast. It's you're not going to walk around here and ever find leaves just laying out on the surface of this place. Even though there's a hundred miles of them, you're not going to find any leaves just laying there. The right. only way you're going to find them is to actively dig for them. And the natural forces of erosion. I mean, you can hear the wind. I, yeah. We know you can hear the wind. <laughs> you can hear the wind roaring loud, and that wind is blowing sand and dirt and flaking this stuff off. You know, well, the sun is beating down onto it. The rain's getting into the cracks. The yeah. roots are tearing it up. One of the things that you, I was going to try to show everybody is, so this is the surface of the dirt. And I don't know if you can see, all it is, this oil shell shattered into a million pieces. And if you look, as you dig down, it is just shattered for two or three or four inches deep, some places feet deep. And that's just the layers falling apart. So any fossil that's in there is destroyed until you get down deep enough that you can start peeling pieces back and getting whole pieces. Until you can get whole pieces, it's trashed. There's nothing left of it. And when you finally do get good pieces, then you can start seeing the fossils. So these fossils will never survive. Unless you're actively digging for them, you will never find these fossils. They just explode and are gone before anybody even gets to collect them. Mother Nature is... She's mean. She's not nice. <laughs> she she wants to kill you. Not only does she want to kill you, but she wants to make the land flat. Yes. That is what erosion is. Is it's taking the wind and the water, it's taking this soil and it's bringing it downhill through the yeah. power of gravity and it's making this these mountains flat. And so it's tearing up these fossils along with the process. Like you see this big exposure that we got here. We had to go through two uh, foot and a half, two feet to get down to solid rock where we could find fossils like this little bit right here that popped up just below my feet. So, you know, that's the only way. If this was on the surface, a small little leaf like this yeah. would have been completely and totally destroyed. What are the kind of things that you can find in here? So leaves, maybe leaves, a fish or two? Leaves, a fish or two, insects. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted this property is the rancher, his mother, back in the 50s, found a couple. She says lizards. I think there's more of a salamander type animal. Yeah. But, I mean, anything that you can find in a swamp today, you could find here. What's fascinating is, is there's a lot of things that are new to science in these beds. And if something like that's found, what do you guys do with it? Well, if there's something that's important, something that's new, nothing make us happier than be able to give it to an academic somewhere to be described. I mean, we... We're doing this for fun as well. We love this stuff just like everybody else does, or we wouldn't be doing it. It's right. a hard way to make a living, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're not getting rich. You no. know, this, this stuff monetarily isn't worth a whole lot. No. But to find a specimen, you know, that's one thing that these guys really, yeah. really are serious about doing is getting the ones that are important to science to science where they can be studied, where they can be identified and described. Because, you know, that's what we want. We want that furtherment of knowledge. And so that's one of the reasons why we come out here is to hopefully find one of those pieces to bring to an institute where it'll be appreciated. So this this is some cool stuff, ma'am. One thing, some... one thing we might want to show is, I mean, just pan around real quick. Everything you're going to see is fossil country. Everything you see, all the layers have fossils in it. It's not like there's just one little layer. There's a thousand feet of rock for a hundred miles. In every direction. In every direction with fossils, full of fossils. Not just a few, lots of fossils. Is that how deep this formation is? It's thousand? about a thousand feet right here where we're at. A thousand, a thousand feet. feet. <laughs> That's a lot. We've dug... 
a 10 foot square, a foot deep in a day, yeah. the four of us. You think we're ever gonna hurt the number of fossils that are being found? No, <laughs> and see, that's just it. The public isn't gonna hurt the amount of fossils no. that are gonna be found. If anything, and the reason why, one of the reasons why we do this is that we hope you guys out there will watch it who've never heard of this, who's never heard of fossil hunting, who thinks it's so rare you, you, you could never do it in your lifetime. What we wanna do is, is show you that you can do this within your lifetime, that it is possible to do this, and that there are places to go where you can go out and find cool stuff like you know leaves or you know this is something really cool that isaac picked up this is we don't know if it's a dragonfly or if it's a flower we're going to take it back to get camp a loop on it. get a loop on it and see if we can't figure out exactly what it is uh you know but or the or the fish i mean there's such cool things to find and that fossil find could inspire the next generation of academics, the next generation of, of fossil hunters. You know, as David Attenborough has said many, many, many times, it is him going out and collecting and finding fossils is why he took the, the course in life that he took. It was all about that one fossil. It's all about that one find. And that's what we hope to inspire is to keep you guys the heck out here in the wind and the elements to get out and to discover stuff. So one of the things I was going to try to show you guys is, so as we're peeling these layers up, they're pretty solid. There's a bunch of layers in there, but the leaves and bugs and things are trapped in this rock. But to show how fast this stuff erodes and how fast it weathers, we dug this this morning two hours ago. Two hours ago at least. We stacked up the bigger plates here. You can see all these big cracks opening up. I don't know if you guys can see that. You see all these big cracks? Now that's just from drying out. The rock is falling apart. And we're going to sit here and pop a few of them and see if we can show you guys. See all the debris, all the plant matter? Now there's tons of fossils, and what we're doing is trying to find good fossils. Now this one's just got a few, we call it hash. Just the debris like you'd find in the bottom of a creek bed, or the bottom of a river, or bottom of a lake. More hash. There's a nice little leaf. But it shows how fast this stuff weathers. Because this stuff will literally, by tomorrow morning, be in pieces laying on the ground on its own without us doing anything. See, this rock has got a little bit of moisture in it when it's buried under the ground. When it's under the ground, it holds on to that moisture. But as it comes to the surface, it is delaminating, it is splitting. And that's the forces of erosion that we were talking to you guys about, how this stuff is just delaminating and turning into those thousands of little tiny pieces that we talked about earlier. So. You know, this is why it's, it's important to get out here and find some of this stuff. So at least somewhere, you know, some of it is saved, some of it is 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 kept and appreciated. See just how fast it's coming apart. <laughs> these are these are falling apart by hand. These were big, heavy, solid plates, and they're just crumbling now. It's that easy. It's that easy. It's a decent leaf. Yeah, there's a good leaf. Good leaf there. So. And if you start looking close, you'll find little insects and little things all over hidden there. Stick. 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 <laughs> we probably found a billion sticks. <laughs> but, you know, that's just it. And one of the reasons why we wanted to show you guys this episode is, is that this stuff is literally crumbling into dust. As you can see, I pulled these out not too, you know, a couple hours ago, and they're already starting to fall apart. So this is one that we've had sitting out for a couple hours. So it's drying, it's splitting, it's separating on its own. But one of the things that we've learned over the years, when you see these dishes, there's always a fossil in the bottom of them. So it pops out and it's just a piece of organic material, but that little piece of organic makes that pop. So it's one of the first things that gets destroyed. So this is an example of a piece that while it was laying out, just kind of cracked on its own and you can see this pop right here in the rock. That, that did that on its own. This is a plate that we had set aside in our pile of stuff. And we're gonna open this up and see what's inside. We've got a couple bugs on this plate and boom, it's another bug. But see, that just shows you the erosion that's going on here is that this rock is continuing to pop and break. That is a great little bug right there that just popped 
popped out while we were while it was sitting here in the pile doing its thing there's another one of those dishes so we keep trying to get one of these good ones on film for you oh there we go so every time it dishes like that it's due to the organic material popping you can see how it actually du dish down in for that one too nice little willow leaf it's a nice leaf that I saved I was kind of happy when I found but just the drying out the rock is falling apart and it's not going to be savable. It's going to fall into a million pieces, even trying to take care of it, trying to keep it. It's just toast. Yeah. So this is one of the things that I really enjoy finding out here. This is a little bird feather. Um, just like when you're walking on the shore of the lake today, you find a whole feathers and little things that get washed up on the edge and that's what we're finding here i always want to get a big feather but these little feathers are kind of neat but what's interesting about this too is there's a little insect that's stuck in the mud next to it ty you got anything else to add no that's about it i mean if you do find something important if you do find something rare don't be afraid to ask go to a museum go to your local paleontological society ask i mean new stuff is important don't be disappointed if it's not important, but there's, I mean, there's a lot to be found still in this world that we don't know about. Yet. Oh yeah. So There's lots of great uh, references online. There's uh, some great fossil forums on uh, Facebook that you can go to yeah. that are really, really good and are policed by people who really, really care about doing it right and making sure that the right things are done. So, Ty, if people want to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Easiest way for everybody to get a hold of me is just Facebook, Utah Dump Digger. It's that simple. Same with us, Smoky Mountain Relic Room or Chasing History on Facebook. Dude, thank you, thank you. so much for having us out, man. And thank you guys for watching. If you want to find out how you can get a hold of us or how you can get involved in stuff like that, go to Utah Dump Digger or go to Chasing History or Smoky Mountain Relic Room on Facebook or Instagram. If you want to find out more about us, you can find us on the web at therelicroom.com. If you're watching it all the way to the end, hit that subscribe button, man. Help us out. If you really like this episode, share it on your social media. Help us spread the word. You know, we don't have 20,000 or 100,000 or a million freaking followers. You know, we are we are so thankful for, for you guys out there that follow us regularly. You have no idea how much we appreciate that. So help us out by spreading the word because that's what we're trying to do is spread the message about cool stuff that you can involve yourself in history. Whether it's human history or fossil history, there's anything that you can think of that you want to be involved in, you can do it. Dude, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Remember, yeah. history rocks. Twitter, no. Twitter, you, Twitter sucks. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Twitter sucks. We'll never, ever, ever, ever. Badgers? We don't need no stinking badgers. <laughs> hey, I bet you don't care. I bet you don't get some of that. Yeah. I'm a hunt badger. We've been in the sun too long. We have been in the sun way too long. Oh my God. Do, 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 stick. Stick. I wish I was a stick. Sticks suck. suck. God, sticks suck. No more sticks. No more sticks. No more sticks. No more sticks. Sticks. Sandworms. Sandworms. Hate them sandworms. God, sticks. Oh, sandworms. Where's a bug? What do you have to say to the audience? <laughs> Watch out for cow shit. Like that pump right there. <laughs>